In the last video of this view, Beautify and Firebase series, we add a logic to be able to register and unregister our users. Now that's nice. However, the problem is if we register and reload our app and therefore lose our existing application state, we again see the register, even though we can see on Firebase that the user has a registration. Now that is what I wanna fix in this video. I want to make sure that when we load our application, I fetched that initial user state from the Firebase database. Let's dive into that together. Now to fetch this initial user state, we'll work in our index.js file in the store folder. There we already got a lot of actions and so on. And we also have one special action that's auto sign in. Now in auto sign in, we basically commit set user right now. Now I want to basically dispatch another action at the same time I sign my user in. So once I know that we have a valid user basically. I want to dispatch a new action which I'll add right below it maybe. I'll ca call it fetch user data. Because signing the user in is nice, but now we're storing extra data in our normal database. Here, the registrations. We don't get this right now. So we have to fetch it as soon as we know that we have a user who signed in. So in this fetch uh, user data action, I of course get commit and I'll also need access to my getters. So I'll already add that too and pull that out of this context object. Now inside fetch user data, I first of all, as always want to commit set loading and set it to true to indicate we're loading some data. And then I need to reach out to Firebase, to the database, call it as a method, and there to my users node for the given user, which I can get with the getters. So getters user ID, because we stored all the registration data under users and then the different user IDs. And then add slash registrations here. Now for that, I want to get a value once. Once value does just that, it fetches the data under this node once. It doesn't set up a permanent listener, it gives us this data once. In the then block, I can use this data in this function here. Now in this function, I first of all want to retrieve the values I got. And for that I access data with the well helper method. The Firebase data basically isn't in a format to be used immediately. So with well, we transform it into normal JavaScript data we can work with. So values gives us the data we got and this will be an object with all our registered meetups. So with the automatically created keys Firebase created as properties and our meetup IDs as values of these properties. So therefore I'll create a new variable which I'll name registered meetups, which is an empty array initially. Now, before I continue here, let's console log values. Let's comment out register meetups and see what we get back right now. Now I got a linting error. This is getters here. Now I can use that here. And to see what happens here, I of course need to call or dispatch fetch user data. Now we're dispatching auto sign in in the main.js file down here. I can simply also uh, dispatch fetch user data here. And I don't need to pass a payload. Now with that, if I save this and I go back to the application and reload, you see that's the data I get back. This is my key value pair. And now the key, the property is this part here. So this automatically generated key by Firebase, whereas the value is the Firebase meetup ID or just the meetup ID, I should say. So I'm interested in a, an array of these strings and I get back a JavaScript object, unfortunately. Now, what I can easily do is in my store, I can loop through all these properties in this values object to store the values of these keys in my registered meetups array. For that, I'll comment this in again and simply create a for in loop where I have my keys in values. And this can be kind of problematic from a naming perspective, I guess. So these will be my data pairs, whatever you like. And now I want to use regist registered meetups and push data pairs key onto it. Because if I access a given key on data pairs, 
I get the value. And that's just this meetup ID string I'm interested in. So with that, I get an array of meetup IDs. I can again simply prove this by printing it to the console again. Now we have an array of meetup IDs. That's looking good. Now I need to store that on the user, of course. However, I also want to set this FB keys value. You remember from the last video, which allows me to easily get the ID of a registration to easily delete it. That's basically almost what I get back in data pairs. There I have a property, which is the registration ID and the value, which is the meetup ID. Now that is the wrong order. I need an object where I have the property be the meetup ID and the value be the registration ID I need to delete. So I need to swap this object basically, the data pairs object. Now that can easily be done. I can actually do it in the very same for in loop. So I'll create a second array, maybe swapped pairs. And swap pairs is an empty object initially. Now in this for in loop where I go through all the data pairs, I can now also use swap pairs. And there I want to set data pairs key. Because remember data pairs key is the value, is the meetup ID, is what I want to use as a new key. So therefore I assign it as a key to swap pairs and the value shall now, shall now just be the key, which is the key of the registration. I know this can be confusing. So let's quickly print both out. So console log registered meetups, we saw that before, but also the swap pairs. Let's save that and let's see what we get. Now we get an array of meetup IDs. That makes sense, we had that before. And we get an object where the key, remember this, krpdy, is actually the meetup ID. And the value, ksns, is actually the ID of the registration. So later when we define or when we see that we want to delete the registration for this meetup, we can simply access this as a property and we get back the value, the registration ID we want to get rid of. That's the logic we're already using. And with that, we're setting it up in a way to easily work. So now we swap this and now I can create my updated user. This is a JavaScript object with the ID being my user ID. So the user can be retrieved from the getters, of course, getters user ID. And the registered meetups will be my registered meetups array I created. So this array and FB keys will be my swapped pairs. And this is at least an empty object. So it never fails if I try to access it. But in the best case, it holds any registrations I have. Now with that, I can finally commit set loading and set this to false and also commit set user with my updated user. We already have that set user mutation. Now I also want to catch any errors, of course. So let's add a catch handler. And in the catch handler, in the error handler, I'll print out the error and of course also set loading to false. Now if I save that and go back to the application, we see it reload. And we also see that I now have the unregister button because, because this user happens to be registered for this meetup. So if I now click this and confirm, we're unregistered, hence it is gone here too. If I click register again, we create a new registration. And if I reload the app, that state should be kept. Now, one other thing is if I log out, I actually get an error. That's interesting. Cannot read property registered meetups of null. Well, it makes sense if I log out on that meetup, the button here should disappear. I'll take care about this in a second. Let me first of all sign in again with the other user I have in this project. This is not the creator of that meetup. And now if I visit that meetup here, reload, this user is not registered for it because the other user is. If I now click register with this user though, here we got a second registration uh, remember that this is the one with WSB or here the UD registration ID is uh, ends with RWV. If I now unregister, it hopefully deletes that. And it does. So this works now with multiple users too. However, let's fix that bug here when we log out. 
That, of course, stems from the fact that we try to find out if the user viewing this page is registered or not. And if we're logged out, there is no user. Hence, there is no registered meetups array we could check. Well, that's something we can easily prevent, though. Let's go to the meetup.view file. And in there, the app meetup register dialog. Here, I want to make sure we only display this if we are authenticated. So with we if, and then user is authenticated. This is our computed property here we already have. I also want to make sure we don't see this button if we are the creator. So only show it if we are authenticated and if we are not the creator. So not user is creator. Now with that, if I save this, we don't see that button and we don't get an error if I now reload this meetup page when I'm not logged in. If I do sign in though, with the creator account, you'll see no button. If I switch to the other account, so the user who didn't create this, I should see my button. And I do, and I should be able to trigger this too. And now the registration is finished. And overall, I am happy with that application. Now we could always continue on with it. We could work on that profile where we don't have anything yet. You could display all registered meetups here. You can add email notifications if you do sign up. But I'm happy with the state of the project as it is. You have to come to an end sometimes. And I have so many new ideas I wanna work on. So this is the project as I will conclude it for now. Well, almost, there will be one more episode where I will do some optimizations split up my store and see if there's something else I feel we can improve or we should improve. So we'll definitely have one more video. Until then, have a great time. Bye.